Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. So in the last few days, if you haven't been living under a rock, you would have seen that companies like GameStop, AMC and Nokia had been spread all across the news and people are overly concerned about the stock market. So in this video, I'm here to break it down for you and put it into layman terms or plain English, if you will, because I can appreciate there are some terms out there like hedge fund, short selling, short squeeze, that probably don't mean anything to most of us. Have you ever seen that film about the 2008 financial crisis, the big short? Whenever there was a big financy term that they tried to explain, they would always show an image of Margot Robbie sitting in a bubble bath trying to explain it to you. So think of me like that, but minus the bubble bath and a very awkward DIY haircut. Anyway, let's get on with the show. I'm Kozan from Financial Madness, helping you be better with your money. So I'm gonna focus on GameStop for the sake of this video. There were other companies involved, but let's just focus on the big one for simplicity. So what exactly has happened? So this has all been caused from a battle that has been erupted between an army of small investors like you and I versus large hedge fund corporations. So it's very much like a David and Goliath situation. So for those that don't know, a hedge fund is a financial institution that will invest in pretty much anything that will give them a profit. And to get into the action, you typically you have to be very filthy rich. So these hedge funds sought an opportunity to make a profit on the market by placing a bet that GameStop's share prices will decrease. Now this type of investment or trading strategy is known as short selling. Short selling is the opposite of buying a stock. When you buy a stock, you're hoping that the price of that stock will increase so you can have greater returns in the future. The opposite is true for short selling. You're hoping the share price of that company will go down in value so then you can then later make a profit. For example, an investor believes the company Financial Madness is overvalued at $100 per share and they would like to place a short on 10 shares. If the investor is correct and the share price later fell down to $20, they have made a profit of $800. However, if they were incorrect and the share price went up in value to $150, they would have lost $500. GameStop is an American video game store with over 5,000 stores worldwide, making it the largest video game retailer in the world. The company had been struggling and not thanks to the coronavirus pandemic, it actually saw their share prices hover around the $4 mark early last year. So the hedge funds placed a bet thinking that the stock price for GameStop will further go down, thinking it was gonna go the same way as the late great Blockbuster store. So far, nothing is out of the ordinary. Until some users on a Reddit forum called Wall Street Bets noticed that GameStop was heavily shorted and they believed the opposite. They thought that GameStop share prices was actually undervalued and they all came together and therefore started buying shares of GameStop. So that was their initial intention but they also had the intention to send a message to large corporations that were short selling. So I struggled to find information about when exactly this started to happen but from what I gather this seems to have taken place about early to mid 20. 20. And since then, more and more Reddit users in this forum were coming together and buying more and more GameStop shares, which was then eventually driving the price up. How does this force the stock price to go up, I hear you ask? Well, it's simple supply and demand. The more people that demand or want to buy a particular stock, this increases prices. The more people that want to sell a particular stock, this drives the price down. This increase in demand for GameStop shares actually saw the stock price for this increase to $18 at the beginning of Jan. But things really blew up on the 11th of Jan, which also happens to be the day that GameStop announced the hiring of three new directors. Now the share price of that day, I believe increased by about 13%, but that was just the start of it. It then soon increased by about 57%, 29%, and all the way up to 60%. And of the day of this recording, which is the 31st of Jan, 2021, the stock price now stands at $325, which is just crazy. I wonder how much money we could have made. Let's say you bought 100 stocks on the 31st of Jan 2020 when the share price was priced at $3.86. If you sold that today, you would have made a profit of $32,116. And what if I bought it at the beginning of Jan this year? If you bought the same amount of stocks on the 4th of Jan 2021, this would have been priced at $17.25 and you would have seen a profit of $30,775. 
So therefore the price surge in GameStop really had nothing to do with GameStop themselves. They didn't release a groundbreaking new product, nor did they do some, I don't know, groundbreaking business transformation. But instead the price surge was caused by a huge increase in demand by Reddit users who wanted to go against the Wall Street short sellers. And on top of that, they also created something called a short squeeze. A short squeeze occurs when the price of a stock increases sharply, forcing those that placed a bet on the price falling to also buy stocks in order to prevent further loss. By the way, if you are enjoying this video so far, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe with notification bell on. I release a video every single Monday talking about all things personal finance with the ultimate aim of helping you be better with your money. And now we're in a state where the GameStop share price is now in a bubble. Now you could argue that the share price was always undervalued when it was at $3, but you can't deny that seeing these surges are massively out of character, particularly as GameStop really haven't changed much in their business plan. Now there are two problems with bubbles. One is not knowing when to cash out, because if you cash out too soon, you may lose out at cashing in at the biggest gain. And number two is that bubbles always burst. And when that happens, there will be financial loss from somewhere, whether it will be the small retail investors or the hedge fund companies, we are yet to find out. Now on Thursday, something really unexpected happened. Trading apps like Robinhood and Trading212 temporarily blocked traders from buying any further shares in GameStop, as well as BlackBerry and AMC, citing extreme volatility. Giving those that had stocks in those companies left with only two options. They could either hold onto the stock or sell it. And on that day, GameStop lost 44% in their share price. And that was simply down because lots of people were no longer able to buy further stocks. And this decision to block traders in buying further stocks in these companies was met with a serious amount of backlash because it seemed that these apps had caved into pressures from big corporations on Wall Street. Now, having done some further research into this, I have no doubt in my mind that Trading212, Robinhood, and any other apps or companies that followed suit got a call or something from the big bosses of Wall Street telling them to do this, which is really, really unfair, especially when you consider that these applications will probably take no issue if a large majority of us lost money and I'm saying us as in the small retail investor however if it's Wall Street that's losing a lot of money then all of a sudden they care and yeah that is just very very unjust even AOC took to Twitter and said this is unacceptable we now need to know more about Robin Hood's decision to block retail investors from purchasing stock while hedge funds are freely able to trade the stock as they see fit as a member of the Financial Service Committee I'd support a hearing if necessary. If you remember from the beginning of the video, I mentioned this is all down to a huge battle between the small retail investor and the very large Wall Street Goliaths. In terms of who's winning this battle right now, right now points go to the small investor. With estimates coming in that short sellers have lost in total $19 billion in 2021, thanks to shorting GameStop stocks. Should you be investing in GameStop or any other stock that is involved with this battle against Wall Street? So before I go on, this is by no means financial advice. This is me just stating my opinion and from what I've read online. Please do your own research and exercise extreme caution when taking any decision to invest your money. At this stage, we're not really investing in GameStop. And when I mean investing, I mean your normal, I think this business model is gonna do well and I want to put money towards it for the long term. Any money that you do put towards this stock is really just a bet on this roller coaster of a ride to continue a little bit further. Now, I mentioned this earlier, but please do exercise caution whenever you decide to put any further money towards these stocks. There is a risk of people jumping on this trend without really knowing what's happening, and they could stand to lose a lot of money as a result. Because we have seen how stock prices can surge in such a small amount of time, but we must remember that the same can be true for the complete opposite, where prices go dramatically down. Today, it is priced at $325. Tomorrow, it could easily be $10, $5, $2. You have no idea how this market is behaving because it is really, really volatile. 
Now saying this, there is a lot of speculation about when this peak will happen. Some saying it might happen when it is hit at $400. Some saying we've already hit the peak and now the prices will go down. Some are even saying that it will get to $1,000 and then we would have reached the peak. Now from what I can see, there does seem to be a huge community spirit behind this. Small investors going against big powerful corporations on Wall Street does seem to be a cause that people can rally behind. And from what I read and understood, this does feel like this community spirit will see this GameStop saga continue for a little while longer. But hey, that's just my opinion. Who knows if I'm right or wrong, time will tell. But if you are interested, I would encourage you to do your own further research. And as always, as I've said, exercise caution if you do put any money towards these stocks. Cool, so that's it for this week's episode. Let me know in the comment section down below what your thoughts are in this whole situation. Were you someone that happened to buy the stocks when they were at $3 or even $18? Well done to you if you did. And as always, if you did find this video really useful, I would really appreciate a thumbs up. That does wonders for the YouTube algorithm and the growth of my channel. And as always, I release a video every single Monday. So if you want to keep up to date with those, hit the subscribe button as well. See you later. Hey.